such an asshole. All right, so this concept kind of came to me. I'm like, ah, crap, I stepped on something. There's there's more gold in this vein than I originally thought. And it's an important lesson, uh, more for the ladies, but men, you too can understand, but this one actually is for the ladies. No, it's not a, a, a trick gift or anything like that. This is just something empirical I realized happening on my little community, my sphere of the internet, my industry. And it does have real and tangible consequences for women. And I face, again, the paradox, like the train tracks are out over there, but the the, the train you girls are on is going to go down that track no matter what I tell you. But for the handful of you that might listen and set aside the prop again, all the wrong information you've been given, you might have a better life and be able to avoid <clears throat> what's coming down or get off at the next stop or something like that. So let me let me meander and kind of kind of show you my observations. So recently on my channel, you know, just as a little bit of fun thing, uh, we were talking about whether or not what we see on the internet, what is presented to us on the internet in general, but in particular, uh, women's opinion and interest in men reflects anything bearing in reality. And naturally the criticisms we have of what we see on the internet is it's all a train wreck, <clears throat> bad news cells, car explosion, car fire cells. And so because of human nature, because people want clickbait, we're all going to go and take a look at the the controversial stuff, the bad stuff, the train wrecks. And so it gets a lot of traction on the internet uh, in terms of men and how their, their interest of women is they see essentially what's on the red pill or manosphere or whatever you want to call it. You, you could, you know, you could Andrew Tate uh, all the way to somebody more milky toast like Dennis Prager. But Men and they have an interest in a huge, huge interest, an, an ultimate economic interest, because they're going to spend so much of their time, money, and resources on the pursuit of women more than anything else, as we're we're programmed to do. And so when men go out, they look and they see girls on TikTok crying, acting absolutely abysmally immature. They go and YouTube, all the media, um, what's it called? Uh, feminist dating strategy, not to mention all the legacy media and 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 uh, information they've received from K through 12 about how women don't need no men, fish bicycle, which makes it even worse because that's not exactly train wrecks on the internet. That's your your third grade teacher telling you that girls don't need you, and you're like, okay. <laughs> Some so some of that, you know, where whereas we thought like, okay, it's it's just the train wrecks on the internet, but wait, this is verified and confirmed by people in the real world. Um what the 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 paradox that we face is like, well, okay, how much of that is true? Do women really dislike men that much? Is there as much antagonism? Between the sexes. Are, do girls really hate men? I mean, it's really gotten to that point. Like, do they hate us? Do they really hate us? Or is this just the <clears throat> the, the bathroom wall of the internet that, that we're witnessing? And so what me and many other men have done, me in particular, is I went out and did a no-joke actuarial study. Uh, pulling data and pulling research and looking at it. And I came out with this book called The Book of Numbers, Analyzing the ROI and the Pursuit of Women, link below. And I had to come to the conclusion very clearly <clears throat> that women do not like men anywhere near as much as men like women. I didn't say that women hated men. I looked at the numbers. You look at, you can go get the book if you want. Polling data, <clears throat> sex frequency studies, a bit, 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 went, went through it. And it, it kind of verified what we already knew. Women are just not that interested in men as much as men are interested in women. So this then goes to the ultimate economic question that men have, well, okay, do I invest in them? Do I pursue them or what, what not? And when you look at it, the numbers factually, you're kind of like, oh, geez, I got to 
I either got to really excel, I got to really be a, a, an exceptional man to have any success with women, or <clears throat> failing to meet these high and increasing standards, I, I, I have to do a cost-benefit analysis. A lot of time you got to choose between your life. Like, I don't have time to go do all that. I got to eat. I got to, I got to pay for rent throwing divorce and like, God, I saw what happened to my old man. I think I'm just going to buy a nice little house and kind of be on my own. And so there has been a little bit of a, a withdrawal and a retraction and a disengagement from women there. But <clears throat> what got me started thinking is all right, it can't be, I know I got the numbers. I know genetically, biologically, women are only fractionally interested in men. But I had to figure out, do women really hate men as much as the internet makes it seem? And so the, the shtick or the thing that I did is like, tell me a good story because the problem you face with assessing something as amorphous as one sex interest in the other sex <clears throat> is you can go polling. There's self-reporting, which is not reliable. And so when you run into these amorphous or impossible to truly measure and get your finger on the pulse type of questions, say, what has your experience been? What has been your personal experience? What do your eyes tell you? What do the boots and the troops on the ground tell you? And my experiences going back decades is, yeah, women just don't like guys that much. Me in particular, because I'm the only one witnessing it through my own <clears throat> individual account. But I'm just one guy. And I said, Tell me, and it's, it can't be that bad. I was thinking like, no, I know some nice girls. I know some nice ladies. I got wonderful women in my life. It can't, it can't be that bad. So I said, to counter nothing but the bad news, I want you guys to tell me the story, good stories of nice girls doing sweet things. And you go back in the videos and see it. And what ended up happening was both funny and somewhat tragic because it kind of dawned on me this is not enough eyewitness accounts or empirical bits of anecdotes. <laughs> to, it It's not debunking what the internet is telling us. So I said, tell me a story of a good girl who did a nice thing. And the first story comes in, this guy helped a girl get her car started. <clears throat> she came back and uh, gave him, I think, some chocolates uh, the next day or two days after that. And he was very thankful. And he says, but that was 1999. And I'm like, all right, <clears throat> something within the past five to 10 years because my audience is younger. I, too, had the occasional nice thing done for me back in the 80s and 90s. Is what I'm talking about now. Another guy emails in. He says, uh, yeah, the, my wife, uh, sex and this and that. She makes spreads of food, duh, 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 but we live in Indonesia. I'm like, all right. <clears throat> Not Muslim or religious, but in, and in a Western nation. Indonesia, nothing against Indonesia, but that's not the United States. Another guy comes in. Girl did a nice thing, something with food. Couldn't remember what it was. Ba, 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 ba. She was Mormon. I'm just like, oh, my God. I'm like, give me a normal rank and file girl in the United States with her liberal arts degree under the age of 30. Blood type. Just give me the. And then one guy came in one so far, uh, although there were some comments. Where uh, this girl did this nice thing, a nice boss uh, didn't have to be romantically inclined. Uh, this nice boss lady and my stepmother took care of us. I was like, good, okay. And I'm not to brag, but I got a pretty good size reach. We're up to about five good stories. And I think in four, I'm like, well, that was the only one that ever happened. <laughs> and so then it dawned on me like, wait a minute. <clears throat> there would have been a lot more counter- anecdotal stories to what we see on the internet that then I was like, Oh man, it's like the housing crisis of the build up to it. it's worse than I thought. <laughs> My numbers are coming in. I'm like, Oh, this is, this is worse than I thought. And I realized that the internet is probably much closer to the reality than what I would like to think it is. And then it got me to realizing like, wait a minute, <clears throat> If this is the, 
if well, one, this might be closer to the reality because there is no empirical person that men's experience with women in the real world is not countering what is being shown on the internet. And two, as we go younger and younger generations, the internet is becoming the reality. The internet is increasingly what men are experiencing. <clears throat> and unbeknownst to women, because I am going to assume at some level in society you're going to want to interact with men or you're going to have to. I'm not even talking romantically. We're going to get to that later. <clears throat> Your front, the public image, your public face that, you know, women incorporate women as a group, at least in the United States, I'd say to the West in general, are presenting to men, whether you like it or not, and whether it is accurate or not, is what men are seeing on the Internet. And because of the natural inclination to see the train wrecks, um, <clears throat> bad news, what travels 10 times the speed of good news. And there's no counter in men's real world living experience. This is now being cemented and ensconced as women in general. Now, I don't know where women actually are in that measure. Sadly, I think it's more towards what the internet is showing men. <clears throat> and it is also through the lens of sometimes jaded men, red pill men, MGTOW men. You can look at your, uh, everyone commonly, frequently quotes the incels. Uh, that is coloring it into an, an even more negative light. And while I know, and going back to the book of numbers, where I did the data and women are only fractionally as interested in men. I'd say indifferent, even flippant, depending on how young you are and how much you want to believe feminism or how important that is to you or how many better options you got in terms of career and all that. Your indifference and your, your lack of interest in men, sometimes even hatred, uh, may say, well, what do I care what men think about me? It, this is why it's unconscious. <laughs> Because like, and some of you may, some of you may want this. Some of you may want nothing to do with men. You want to be left alone. You've never liked them that much. <clears throat> you just want to get to your career, et cetera. But then countering that is, would be the nightmare of women posting their losses on TikTok, all lamenting and, oh, I can't find a guy. And then and, and I see occasionally while there's a crack in the wall, like so, some girl left the hive and a pine. She wanted to get married and all that. <clears throat> and I think what women are unaware of, because it require uh, empathy and not being solipsistic, it require you to stop and take a moment to say, put yourself, okay, let me put myself in men's situation. What men are seeing as it pertains to their interest in women, pretty universally, pretty consistently is not good. Certainly on the internet, and I, I have to I have to say, corroborated by the mainstream in the culture. Not kidding. Now, ladies, just sit down and think about this. Right? I'm I'm trying to like the internet can't be that bad, but then I gotta go back. It's 1981. I remember my teacher, I can't mention her name because that bitch might be alive still, might sue me, telling me that women didn't need men. Six-year-old boy. That could, that message has been continued on, right? Previous to the internet in the real world, right? That's that's the unified message in the analog meat space world you've told guys, right? Now it's just reconfirmed on the internet. And now without any kind of objection or qualifying statements to say, well, it's this, but not really that. <clears throat> we don't hate guys. Oh, no, no, no. But, but there's there's either not enough of it or just none of it at all to counter this narrative that when you take in the totality of information and empirical data men have received from their being a child, pre-internet days to today, the, the, the front, the message you are sending men is you want absolutely nothing to do with them. And sometimes you outright hate them, which is called misandry. 
which is the <clears throat> opposite of misogyny. Now, you may not believe that. Now, I got to imagine some billion women in Western civilization, not all of them hate men. Some may be indifferent. Some of you might be greatly annoyed, but I can't imagine all of you. Well, that's too bad. Because in being quiet or not mentioning something or being nice to a guy or whatever else, right? Most men now are getting this unified uh, 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 message that you're definitely not interested in them. <clears throat> and a lot of you don't like them. And as I said before, maybe some of you don't like men. Maybe some of you want nothing to do with men. You're okay if they go away, you're left alone. But this PR nightmare that you are unaware of, where you have definitely turned away half the population, where they don't want to have anything to do with you, or they're afraid to have something to do with you. This has real and serious consequences beyond dating and romance. The least of all, you know, of course, obviously romance and all that. So let me let me show you what's happening here, perhaps unbeknownst to you, but might explain some phenomenon that you're witnessing, right? First, romantically. Now, the genetics were assumed to be that men would always be interested in women. And those those numbers still bear out. <clears throat> they still do. Let women get thousands more inbox messages. Um, when women get older, they have very little interest in dating, but men more or less still have an interest in women. Uh, so there there is a genetic reality there that men will always be sexually and romantically more interested in women than women would men, although that will taper off with age and men's testosterone going down. But more concerning for younger generations of women, and this is just the empirical data. I'd have to get polling data, but sometimes it just ain't out there. But I got to look at my crystal ball and I say, there's a lot of young guys just dropping out. <clears throat> I, I think the message on the internet, that PR campaign, that United Front, that United Memo, they all got... These guys are looking at it combined with what they were told in the di non-digital age, the uh, analog days, and watching their old men get divorced. I know there's, at least in my experience, in my field, my little consultancy, I see more and more men just dropping off. And I'm not talking what you see, bitter old, pissed off, what are you, incels, whatever you want to call them, in chat room. I'm like, no, this guy has a degree, da, 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 they're, they're, they're pulling out, they're pulling back. Even saw it modernly, which was one of the snowflakes that caused this avalanche of a, of a video, was the Hakimi Habibi, uh, the Moroccan soccer player. <clears throat> oh, he got married, but he put all the money into his mom's name. And which is cool, which is okay. There, you could do that's essentially a trust, is is what they were setting up there. But the response, holy cow! I had no. I mean, yeah, okay, one for the guys, but it was much larger. If I look at the numbers and metrics when I post a little meme or something about it, there's a lot of guys like no. Also, another one, the passport bros. Now I know you find them. Low brow, low class, virgin incel losers who care. Okay, fine. Your criticisms might be valid. Valid. It doesn't change the fact that they have removed themselves from the market to to go overseas. And I was always amazed. It's like, well, the male sex drive is, you know, aside from, <clears throat> I guess, nuclear power is the strongest force in the universe, but. There is even a limit to what men are going to tolerate. And if they've seen nothing good and kind of corroborated by the infrequency of happy stories of a girl doing a nice thing, they they also inevitably you put you force them to make a choice between living a life that you get, they got food, clothing and shelter or one of divorce risk poverty drama mental and all they were like whoa i i gotta live man <laughs> i gotta pay tax i gotta eat pay off my student loans <clears throat> and with such a which so it, it is it's negative it's a very negative discouraging deterring message that the, the unified front whenever women incorporate decide to you know issue their their public statement 
that even though men obviously have genetic programming, although testosterone is going down to younger guys, so they may not be as as uh, <clears throat> incentivized to chase women as they once were, but there's an increasing number of men pulling out of the market, which to me, I'm like, wow, because that goes against their sex drive. And that's a pretty powerful thing, All right? So that that's probably the most saucy aspect where men are pulling. And you girls, I, I mean, the video as I see, what I see on the internet, why can't you find a man? There's not enough economically attractive men. There's the, and if you look at polling data, when, just so you know, guys, women do want men. They just want five or six things in life more than men. That's based on polling data, right? Sometimes it makes sense. Like, yes, you should probably get an education and get a career, get your finances stabilized. Um, <clears throat> you're not immediately going to get married. So yeah, younger gal, well, why not go to college? Absolutely makes sense. All right. But women are, yeah, men are about seventh based on marrying age women, um, in, in terms of their priorities in life. And so men are picking up on that. <laughs> they don't get the polling data. They might think they're dead last based on how it's, it's pretty bad on there on the internet. <clears throat> anyway, but you girls, you do want men. You just don't want men that much. And and uh, that being said, you'll usually, over a long enough period of time, accomplish everything else you want, and then you'll want the man. Well, you got to think about what you were telling men from the age of, whatever, 13, 14, whenever the dudes hit puberty, to the age of 33 when you're finally ready to settle down. That's 20 years of pretty much, get the F out of here, I don't need you this career and my child and this and that, like all this other stuff was more important. And now, now I'm ready. But, you know, so ladies at this point in time, like I want a man. Well, you should have been cultivating a much more friendly and welcoming environment to men than this us versus them hostility. Certainly in college. Oh my God. Could you make it any less appetite? Whoa, whoa. I'm not going to go into a Kevin Samuel Samuelian Kevin Samuels esque uh, argument or or not even argument uh, <clears throat> convincing to say well maybe you ought to be nice and thin is felt and attractive and consider what men, that that is beyond the pale that is that is I'm not even going to go there but I am saying that for ladies, those of you who wanted to get married, like it was, even if it was number seven, eighth or ninth or 10th or sixth on your list, um, you, men have withdrawn. And as I'm also very familiar and aware, cause I do have female clients every once in a while, because starting young, there was such a deterrence of like, we don't need you, blah, blah, blah. A lot of men just didn't invest the money at a, as 13-year-old boys to become the qualified men you wanted. So imagine if we had more of a 1950s-style Ward Cleaver, Andy Griffith, some a little bit more strict and disciplined. <clears throat> There'd be a higher percentage of men who would have grown up to be men, but a higher percentage of boys that grew up to become marriageable men. But you said no. Uh, and you even made it a little scary for a lot of these guys. All right, so already there's a disengagement on a romantic level. Fair argument, fair argument. Maybe they're not the best. Maybe the ones you wouldn't want to have done it. And, and by like admitting defeat, I guess in a certain way they are weaker. And like I'm not putting, though there be the argument, a lot of them be smarter. And I do know the guys that come across my desk make a lot of money, and they're not necessarily out of shape either. <clears throat> they're just, I guess, better assessors of risk. I would argue. But in either case, there are less men in that market. You have deterred them against their sexual uh, their sex drive to abandon it or put very little into it uh socially uh you see this where okay uh I, you know that is the pre-breeding grounds for getting together now this is more the internet well there's the internet that makes social media social not actually getting together and physically in the first place but the social media has such a negative spin on it though maybe not a negative spin it might be accurate that men if they, all they do is consume digital media they're already de deterred and have their expectations lowered uh but socially that men are pulling out and disengaging from women 
<clears throat> more due to the fact that social media and the internet exists. I got this young girl. She used to be a little, little poop, little three-year-old poop. Now she's an 18-year-old poop. And I was kind of curious, like, well, what's dating? Oh, we don't date. Like, what do you mean you don't date? Oh, that's practically being married. I'm like, what? okay, do you guys go, like, there's Bobby and Susie. Bobby asked Susie to go to the movies. Oh, no, no, you don't, like, you don't go to the movies? Or oh, whatever, like, you don't go to, you don't go to, like, get dinner or something? What, what, you know, even me, old middle school Cappy with his long hair. I would take girls to the movies, scratch up some money working over at a landscaping company. <clears throat> oh, no, no, no. And she then told me that, and I've seen this also come across my desk. But you got, I think it's also, you got them so damn scared. None of these young boys want to go out like, whoa, in person. She's telling me about people that are dating in the school or they're, they're hanging out. That's the word. That's the phrase. They're hanging out. Even these guys don't commit. <laughs> Even the high schoolers don't commit. They're like, no, we're, we're just hanging out. We're just hanging out. I can date other girls in one. We're just hanging out. But even if you were hanging out, they don't hang out in person. They're all on the internet. And she says, there will be people that will walk right past each other that are hanging out. <clears throat> but they, they'll they only date online. And I've seen more and more men come across my desk. Now, these are not high school boys. These are men, 18 plus where it's just digital online relationships only like, oh, I'm finally going to meet my girlfriend. Wait, 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 what? What? You've been dating, th three, no joke, three years. You've been dating a girl overseas for three years on the internet. You're finally going, are you nuts? But socially, now, again, I will, I will completely side with the women on this. <clears throat> the boys are absolutely socially inept. Now, you... We didn't need no fathers, right? Fathers don't, you know, you just need teachers and, and the mothers to raise the children. You wonder why these boys come out like malnourished plants with their social life. All right, so I understand there, all right, these boys are not exactly taught to be a charming, charismatic James Bond character. But I am pretty sure that they get the exact same unified front at the age of 13, 14, and 15 that boys are icky and gross. And you don't need it. Now, again, we'd have to do some polling. But I don't see any happy joke. Man, I can't wait to meet a guy. And look, I wore a dress. And I know this. I know this. I look at this high school. I drive past every once in a while. Not in that way. <clears throat> Kids look like they're dressed like refugees. I'm like, where are the women? Where are the girls? Where's the cute girl wearing the dress? They don't do that anymore. And I'm sure if younger men consume nothing but digital and internet media, let alone their digital and social lives, aren't they? There's going to be another negative. Look out here. I am. I read Sylvia Plath. That was what they did back in my day. Now it's just done on the internet. Familially. All right, here you got to, you got to admit we're now in the third generation of divorce. All right. So this has nothing to do with the internet. All right? Plenty of boys today have seen their dad and their grandfathers get divorced. Some people have seen their friends get divorced. Nobody can keep a relationship together, whether they got kids or not. Then you see all the, now admittedly, this is like tabloid daily mail, which of course is biased. That's a train wreck site. That's, it's the tabloid. But again, here, now, am I a famous Moroccan multimillionaire soccer star? No, I am not. But I could see like, oh, she went after him for his money. Interesting. That's been going on forever. And then the universal message that women have sent men of varying ages that you don't need a man putting fathers dead last. I think the last time a father was portrayed in a positive light was Tim Allen's um, <clears throat> last man standing. All right. You want, you get the, oh, everything's toxic masculine. Okay, fine. We're out. And by the way, not only is there, the internet and the public statements and issuances by women incorporated, your whoever's in charge of your PR, whoever you hired for PR is doing a real bad job. Not only the issuing these, these uh, public statements, um, there's also the financial aspect of forming a family divorce. Oh, that'll wipe a guy out. So, and they've seen it's not it's not this is not 1973 and baby boomer men are getting caught with the pants down. Everyone sees this coming a mile away. <clears throat> Hell, half of them don't even have their parents married when it, when they get born. 
but there's also the financial aspect. Now, again, not all girls are not aware of this. It's not women in general, but disproportionately, you girls do head up HR departments. And disproportionately, you're all requiring bachelor's required, master's preferred. And then you, <laughs> you won't, you won't, ooh, now all girls do this, at least in the United States, not Australia, interesting enough. Ooh, trades, gross. Ooh, a truck driver, gross. You all require some impossible to achieve, a very statistically unlikely uh, 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 chance of achieving title like president and CEO. That takes dudes until they're in their 40s to achieve. It's a legitimate company. Investment banker, surgeon. And so now these guys are like, I got to incur how much debt to get a college degree, then to go get a grad degree, <clears throat> then another. But then, as I, and I've pointed this out before, girls are not aware of this. It has nothing to do with the message that is being put out on the internet or in public. But you girls do vote to make things free, right? Because you want to help out the little people. But then you're shocked that these guys stay at home, collected stimmy checks or live at home with mom and dad or get disability checks or welfare or free rent or tuition assistance. You do know that the men you want who make the money and can support themselves, they need to develop a work ethic. The only way you do with that is let them face starvation, sink or swim. But you keep bailing them out all the time. I'm not saying this is <clears throat> no reason to vote for the Democrat Party, although I would argue that anyway, but you enable them to never grow. And so when every young man is faced with this, man, I got to go to school for all my youth from five years old to 18. But that ain't enough. Now I got to get a bachelor's degree, probably a master's degree, and I got to make six figures, probably more like 150 after the taxes I pay. And I got to become, I got to make it into this prestigious area that, uh, which only one in a thousand guys actually get into. And in their brain, they're saying, this is at least a 20 year investment. All my youth is gone to maybe get girls that, as far as I could tell on the internet, hate my guts and certainly don't need me. And like I said, there, e there is even a limit to the male sex drive where they're like, oh, hell no. And you're like, well, here's some welfare and disability checks. Ooh, do you have a touch of the tism? You could get government money for that. Oh my God, do I have a touch of the tism? Yeah, doc, give me the give me the prescription and the diagnosis. Oh, government money, here I come, playing video games, eating the chicken tendies. My mom got me, cause I'm so disabled. And you're like, oh, I helped out the poor guy. Where are all the good men? It's a calculus. It's a cost-benefit analysis. That hurdle is not only too high to jump, they can't jump it. They're smart me like, well, I have, whoa, what? <laughs> what? <laughs> so they, they, you have made it, not you personally, but as a group, you've made it pretty hard to become a self-supporting adult, especially with the taxes and all that. But I'm not going to go into that. <clears throat> and you've made it really easy. For these guys to like, well, I could just exist. I don't have to form a family. I don't have to get the, the job. And then again, there's always that backdrop. You don't need no man. He better have this. He better have that. The guys like, or I could just have a really easy life of playing video games and living off my parents while I get a government disability check because, oh my goodness, I have a touch of the, of the, uh, 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 uh. I do believe I, I I have a touch of the tism now. Ooh, twelve hundred dollars a month, awesome! All right, it's a lot of chicken tendies. But then there's also <clears throat> children. If they want to have children, I'll be perfectly honest. Most of the young men that I run across, they they just don't they don't. Children is not they're they're just thinking to survive and get by. Like, what do I do to not be poor? And it's like, engage with society as little as possible. <laughs> Just make your money. Shut up. Do, do that. Uh, they're not thinking like, oh, I'm going to work hard and get kids and make enough money to support a family. It's like, what do I need to support me? And I, not that much, by the way. And here's a remote job. And then you go off and sit on a beach in Thailand and work on a, in a sunny day. <clears throat> and then finally, uh, professionally, uh, where was this? 
there was, now this is India. India, uh, first world adjacent because the, you guys were part of the British Empire like we were. So there's, there's some commonalities. You guys speak English and all that. I was shocked to find out how far and how much feminism has infiltrated that country. Just shocked. Just shocked. I don't know the underlying cultural pinnings, but there was a girl on the internet um, where she retweeted her friend who worked at a predominantly all male office and she was upset, not, not uncontrolled, but she's just upset. That none of the men would talk to her. They wouldn't only talk to her about business. They wouldn't only do work at that. Well, I guess India has even more rules. Uh, like I chop or I hop or shop or chop, is it? There's all these rules that if well, Becky, which isn't an Indian name, but an Indian female <clears throat> accuses Punjab of whatever, like it's it's guilty until proven innocent, which there's elements of that here in the United States, too. Now, I believe it was that guy, Pete, you refused to invite to social gatherings. He found some polling data that back in the day, I believe it was the <clears throat> 60s and 70s, maybe it was the 70s and 80s, where women were coming into the office for that first time. Certainly the 70s was in there. And they found that where women met their husbands went from church and other community sort of gatherings to the office. And I think it got as high as like, was it 20%? One in five women met their husbands at the office. Now, this is back when women wanted to get married, okay? My dad tells me women are not that interested in getting married, and they do not want to be bothered at work with any kind of romantic or sexual innuendo or offers. That's different different women, different cultures, right? But because men, and think about all the effort you ladies put and invest into your careers, Men have put an equivalent amount of effort into their careers. And now, interacting with you, because of admittedly some bad actors, right, where there have been fake accusations. Don't tell me it's all true. You just, but no, 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 no. There has been fake accusations. I know one guy who got fired. I can't say why or what. He didn't do nothing. That's honest. Uh, he, he refused to do something is what it was. And they, he got out. Uh, and the decades, this guy is up. He's up there. You know, he got a job very quickly thereafter. But if just one false accusation or what would be common, I'd, I'd, I'd surmise, is a misunderstanding. <clears throat> We're like, oh, hey, can you do that? And that's misinterpreted as, as unwanted advances. All right. Just one accusation. Whether it's true or not, whether they investigate it or not, puts all those years of school and all those years of work at risk. And I, I found it absolutely hilarious that after that Kavanaugh thing, no matter what you thought about it, that girls were shocked that men were following the print Pence principle. Like, nope, I'm leaving the door open. No, I'm not traveling with women by myself. And you might find that unfair. Well, I've never done that. You're right. You've never done that. And the majority of women probably haven't done it, but it just takes one. And because the costs are so severe and life destroying now, no, now we don't get, this is why we can't have nice things. You don't get to meet your husband, which tragically, if you think about it, <clears throat> where would be a great place to meet a reliable man with employment, job stability, professionalism, and maturity. Oh, a guy at work. Because he has a job and he's displaying that he's responsible and he has an income. <laughs> you can't do that. <laughs> I mean, another one, an example of one bad apple ruining the lot is the, the more recently, although this falls under social disengagement, is the girl that a handful of girls but posted the drama videos of guys at the gym looking at them. Whether they were looking at the girl because, well, she happened to be in that view when he was looking. Or he's like, well, when's she going to get off that machine? Or when can I use those barbells? All right. And then they go, it takes one. And now at the internet, it will deter all. The men keep this constant balance, especially when their entire career depends on it. And once again, what is the public statement your PR firm put out? What is the universal wall in front that has been cemented? 
Don't you dare it's sexual harassment? Don't you dare talk to girls? Ba, 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 ba. No, but and now just no. And now they're disengaging from you professionally. <clears throat> now, here's the problem. There's two main problems I see with this, aside from the fact that men and women aren't getting along together. And it's it's sad. It's depressing for both. I don't see any happy women on the internet. I don't think you're all happy with this antidepressant use among women is going through the roof. I don't know. Maybe fall in love, have a little bit of sex, have an orgasm every once in a while. Just, just me, just me. <clears throat> but there's two huge drawbacks. One, I am, I'm not a misogynist. I'm not, I'm an empiricist. I have always tried to help. Like, look, let, perfect example, ladies, you don't want to hear this, but I'm, I'm actually trying to help you. You can't ma you can't keep majoring in dumb things. You just can't. It's not because I hate women or us. It's quite the opposite. I want you to major in engineering and accounting and actuarial science and surgery. Bah, 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 so you can close the wage gap, wage gap and have a good life. Right? <clears throat> that I would say that is the majority of men. They're just constructively critical of you. And you it really would go a long way to assess whether they're hating on you and just calling you names or they're constructively critical. Right? For example, being fat is gross. It's not good for you. If your emotional, if your reaction is emotional and, oh my God, how dare you are not, you do not know who your friends are. You do not know what real misogyny is or, or hatred or, <clears throat> or evil for that matter. Right. But going forward, if all, generations of men in the future, younger men I'm afraid you're going to have some true misogyny because all the message men got, young men, boys, have received is that you, it's it's almost like going back to the, the grade school playground. Girls are icky. Boys are gross. Was it actual misandry, misogyny? Okay, yeah, by definition, but that's what little boys and girls do. But it doesn't stop. It never ends. There's not you – know, I, I quoted – when I was talking about this a little bit before on a different a different uh, video, it's it's the classic line from Die Hard where Sergeant Powell's down there. He's talking to the lieutenant. And he says, "You that man's up there alone in pain and hurting. Now you think he's going to give a shit what you do to him if he makes it out of there alive? Why don't you wake up and smell what you shoveling? He hasn't seen deadly squat from you guys you know, the entire day. Like, there's there, show me the good news." Show me. <clears throat> because right now, and I don't think most women are aware of this. I think because in part they're conditioned to think, oh, the patriarchy and all men are bad. And I'm like, yeah, there's some young guys who really have not been around in the patriarchy days. Like the 14-year-old boy who just did everything his parents told him. And all he heard is bad news and how he's a bad guy. Why would he come up with a positive view of women? Why would he want to? I mean, the best you can hope for is he avoids you. He doesn't want to interact with you. He's afraid of you. Not like you're going to beat him up, but because if he interacts with you, he gets called to the principal's office or he gets called to HR and he loses his career. Blah, blah, blah. Sometimes maybe even lands in jail. He's certainly not going to ask you out. And this kid is sure as hell not going to work hard towards a master's to go get married with a 50% divorce rate, 75% of the time instigated by the gal. So because there is no good news, it's us versus them since these poor little kids. Are, I think you're going to actually see some of you. You think it's misogynistic now. You think the patriarchy existed. You just wait. And then the other thing is that society is going to end, not not collapse. It's going to end. But I mean, one might argue fine. a collapse <clears throat> that indicates some kind of economic problem. It's going to end because you cannot have the two sexes not interacting with each other, because if the two sexes don't interact with each other, you don't have future humans. And therefore, society ends not necessarily collapse. It could be very nice. It's just like, well, there's no children. Now, humans will continue on the economic and political underlying infrastructure that the current dynamics is, is now that will go away and we're going to go back to square one. And I'm, I'm not with you. the human race isn't going to end. Right? But your current society that you have now, which maybe you don't care about, maybe you're indifferent. I, you know, I'm, I'm I don't have any kids. 
I, I kind of feel, well, okay, it's going to collapse, but I'm not going to be here. <laughs> what do I got? I don't have kids. They're not going to suffer. So there's that very flippant and different and uninvested uh, thing. But if you wanted to have kids, if your family was part of your life, if you wanted to live here and enjoy your life, uh, a society where the sexes are warring at e with each other will not work. It will not. It will be miserable. It will be painful. It will be what we have right now. And inevitably, it will end. The cultural society will end. Certain people will continue breeding. But it, it, whatever you liked about this culture, whatever you wanted about it, it's gone. <clears throat> it will end. And I don't know about you, even though I don't have kids, I don't want kids. I would like to have happier relationships with the opposite sex instead of constantly being told that somehow I'm oppressing half the population because I got a dick or as Atham would say, dick. And that, that, that there annoys me psychologically. Like I haven't done a thing to you. Shut up. Oh my God. The constant whining and complaining. And I, I don't know. I mean, the girls, y'all seem to be complaining a lot. I can't tell if that's real or on the internet or what. I can't tell. I can't tell. <clears throat> but instead of whining and complaining and men are evil and men are bad and we don't need you. I don't know. Maybe try something nice. Or, or And first, I'm getting ahead of myself. First, all I want, <clears throat> all I'm trying to do with this video is to raise awareness about the message women in general are putting out there for men and to be open-minded enough to stop. You can not agree with my opinion. That's fine. All I want you to do is stop and consider yourself a young man, boy, old man, whatever. I say, you know, what you're watching a video or you're reading a newspaper, whatever you what would that be like if you're a guy? Just just try it. I know, I know. Those happy women who are professors in college are just so happy. They told you you're oppressed and men are evil and bad. I, I know, I know. Just, just look how happy they are. But just try. Or stop and go. Or show me some good news, man. Show me some good news. Show me. And it was. It was a very, I was kind of sad. I was like reading it. I did the video. And. Uh, this girl, uh, this guy drove truck and he supplied this store. And one of the ladies who worked at the store made him a, a, a nice basket, a thank you basket. And I was like, oh, that's so nice. Right. But, you know, I'd like to hear those stories like, oh, grandpa built the house with his own hands so grandma could have a kitchen or whatever the hell it was. That, that ain't there. And she made him food. Oh, my God, made him food. No, anything. But although what was funny is nearly all the stories involved the woman making some kind of food. It was like, oh, yeah, I remember that. That was when girls made food or at least knew the way to a man's heart was through his stomach. It was like, yeah, food. Yeah, I remember. I like food. Some food over here, please. I remember that. when, Man, if a girl just made me food back in college, I was I was st literally starving. That would have that would have. Whoa, wait, what food? So it it's up to you. I I just be aware. Take a look. Just step back and say, okay, what what are what is the unified front? What is the unified message we're telling men? And I think I could be wrong, but you're gonna come to the conclusion, yeah, it's not good. It's not encouraging, it's certainly not welcoming, it's adversarial, it's confrontational, it's condemning, it's accusatory. <clears throat> And you got to ask, like, okay, are you surprised you can't find a man? <laughs> are you surprised men aren't mentoring you? Are you surprised men are shutting down? And, boys, I, I, there's nothing I can, I mean, you've seen it, but you have the right, you know, you don't have the right to anyone's time, okay? That, you don't have that right. You do have the right that if you're going to, uh, um, <clears throat> I guess, engage in capacity of romance or sexuality or love or dating or whatever, courting romance, whatever, the girl should treat you nice. I, and boy, God almighty, talk to Vlad Elkins, just, and I've had it, Rolo had it, all these girls that were just mental and ill, like presumably were dating them, it should be nice, and all they did was scream, 
sometimes assault. And you're just trying to be the nice guy. You're like, what in effing God's name? And you're thinking, what did I do wrong? And that's how bad it is. You did nothing wrong. <laughs> it should be women treat you nice. It should be women like, I'm not saying it's the end all be all, but maybe they make you a meal and bring it to you when you're working a late night shift. A girl should show up on time to a date and not not uh, uh, <clears throat> flake on you. And a girl shouldn't go back to her ex-boyfriend. <laughs> A lot of should, but I just want to let you boys know that no, you, you, your your self preservation instincts and your self respect is working correctly. Girls should not be going on bipolar screeds and rants and throwing pots when you literally did nothing. And so it it just so you know, I have no hope, absolutely no hope. There's there's just been trillions of human hours invested across hundreds of millions of lives that this is this is the way it is. People's programming are, are sent. It's only going to be a future generation of younger people who stop. Whoa, wait a second. Wait a second. Hold it. No, I'm not doing that. So I think these, these, um, these two ships, these two oil tankers are heading at each other and there's no slowing them down or turning them away. It's just going to crash. It's there's, there's people are too invested in too. Their, their programming is too cemented. I don't think you could, after a certain age, I don't think your brain could be rewired. I don't think it takes an incredible amount of independent thought and will and courage to say, well, I'm not getting what I want. I better change my tactics. Um, but, but there will come a point in time, men and women will find each other enjoyable again. <clears throat> we will get together where we have a mutually beneficial relationship, but I just don't think it's going to be this generation, uh, the millennials. And I don't think Gen Z either, maybe alpha. I don't know. Anyway, regardless, Link below if you want to see some data and statistics and see I'm not just blowing smoke. I have a link below the book of numbers, analyzing the ROI and the pursuit of women. That would be for women to read as well. So you can see like, yeah, here's the numbers. And then also the menu, Life Without the Opposite Sex. And it's not me. It's Morgan Stanley, Dean Witter. Or maybe it was J.P. Morgan. One of those big investment banks that isn't me. They forecasted that about 45% of women are going to be single and not have kids ever in their life. They are, will not be married. And never have kids in their life. That means half the men will also not be married and have kids. And so since that was largely what gave people point and purpose in life, half of you are going to have to figure out what to do with your life. And ladies, you might already be there, right? Like, you know, you're finally realizing, well, Mr. Perfect isn't around. I'm 38. And you got a great career and a degree. And you you got to make like you got to make plans in the contingency. You ain't never getting married. There won't be a guy because you're right. There isn't a lot of quality men out there. You're right. So with that in mind, what are you going to do with the rest of your life? Well, may I recommend the menu, Life Without the Opposite Sex. It goes through everything in life that will give you point, purpose, value, and reason in living outside of other people. And there you are. And there you have it. That's it. And I don't know why we're here. If, if, if you kids would like to avoid this fate, <laughs> if you'd like to know how to, how to navigate, I got a course out there called The Dad You Never Had. If we had fathers teach our boys and girls, like, look, I know your mother wants you all to hate each other, but let me explain something. Maybe you ought to like each other. That's available on teachable.com. The dad you never had. Life lessons your dad should have taught you, but didn't. All right, let's go to the super chats, and then Cap is going to go for a hike. Because it's 70 degrees and wonderful outside. Ooh, a lot of a lot of people in the room here. Look at this, 445 people. Bear with me here, guys. I'm just going to the top so I don't miss no super chats. Ba -ba -da -ba -do. I guess I could also point out that there are we are going to enter an international global market. I and with the with the passport rules, I did forget to mention that there there are women overseas that. Though they do have ulterior aims, I will. I, it's it's not just like oh, simple as that, bro. But the men will go overseas and find it what they have to. <clears throat> uh, but I'm I'm getting. But given the the current PR message, that that's another thing I'm confused about. What do you care? What do you girls care if the guys go overseas? You did. You, I'm pretty sure the message you sent them was you didn't want them anyway. Aren't you happy these, quote, lesser men are not going to bother you anymore? 
All right, Dr. Oh, Dr. Paradox, 20 generous dollars again. Gen X, Deep South, learned Mandarin, purchased condo in Nanjing, met traditional woman, married in China. Why exert effort and take... Yeah, here we go, right, right, you know, passport bros. Why exert effort and take more risk just to settle with the fugly who's going to rob you blind anyways? Gentlemen, what? Yeah, it's, it is that simple. I, <clears throat> I'm, I'm more confused why there's even a backlash when you girls encourage the men to leave that you don't want, you know, like, good, fine, get out of here. We don't want you anyway. Christoph Anon, five bucks correct. Dr. P, get a TFL English teacher certification and move to Russia. Plenty of traditional women about. I I know a guy who married several Russian women and none of them worked out. I'm, I'm very, I understand the logic in going overseas. There's some risks. There's some risks. Mexi Man and Cheese, five bucks. Have you seen the things that work for our relationship videos? They list what they each do. 90% of the vids have the man doing everything. Stealth red pill. Um, I, <clears throat> you, I'm not disagreeing with you at all. Not at all. But in stating that, you're implying there might be an algorithm or way to unlock the cheat code. There isn't. Again, look at my research in the book of numbers. Look at what women are universally telling you. And again, ladies, I am always open for you presenting counter evidence of, no, no, women really do want men. And here's the nice things we would do or the nice things we currently do. And, and we're just, we, we're just whatever, uh, uh, an outspoken, we are an outshouted uh, <clears throat> minority or group of women. No, no, we really, we really do. Um, that they don't like you that much. <laughs> women don't want men that much, and there's no magic up, up, down, down, left, right, left, right, A, B, A, B, start. That if I just do more chores or if I do this, no, they don't like you that much and so you you how many decades have we wasted on like and i'm not against game or like yeah put on deodorant and get a haircut and but to the granular level like ooh, what do my cufflinks look like should i part my hair left or right guys if we're at that level you, you gotta really that they don't like you that much parting your hair this way or that way but in a blue or green shirt it won't matter doing dishes twice a week versus once a week it won't matter. They're not interested. I would also strongly recommend all you boys go watch uh, what it's like being a 10 on my channel. Also get Rich Cooper's book, Unplugged Alpha. The last chapter says it all there. I mean, all the other chapters say it, but you you have to be a 10 or go home. That's it. That's the only way. And I'm not being pessimistic. I'm not being dark pill or whatever. It's that's all my data tells me, and I'm a pretty good economist. I'm pretty good. Now, the irony, the tragedy, there's there's nothing but guys in here, which I kind of knew. I just I, I really just want to put this out there for posterity. So some sociologist in the future, like, hey, wait a second. <clears throat> John Watson, 10 bucks, 28 year old truck driver making 70, 80 K. Do you plan on going back to school? Being with a truck driver is embarrassing. What a girl actually said that, huh? Well, she made 30K as a social worker. Checked out of the market ever since. Yep. I, Ladies, show me the opposite. I, I'll, I'll run it. You can email me. You can put the links below. You show me the empirical evidence of women wanting men. Show it to me. Show me where girls are treating men nice. Show me where there's a nice. Show me. Show me. And then I will start to believe that, okay, there is a contingent or a, a, a fraction, <clears throat> or a faction. But right now, I have to, both empirically and uh, anecdotally what I witness, there is no good news. None. And this is just, you know, it's like the balance of scales. They got like three little grains of sand on the positive story. Here's one more grain of sand on the tonnage the billions or trillions of grains of sand are like, no, they don't like you that much. Or at least that's what the message is. I'm willing to admit that, that 
The message is different from what women actually want. But as I've said many, many, many times before, it doesn't matter what women want deep down inside. It's what their actions are because you cannot act on what people feel or think. You can only act on what they act and put forth into the real world. <clears throat> and boys, I want to I want to point this out. Like, Go look. You tell me if I'm wrong. And then you tell me if you want to invest 25 years of your life in K through grad school, slaving away money, saving up money, but paying the taxes. And then, you know, because not only do you got to pay taxes so you can support other people's families for all the single moms out there and the broken homes and all that, which we do, which we do. And ladies, those of you that work, you do, too. Now you're expected to go and pay for your own family. <laughs> Bye. Goodbye. Oh, uh, Abdiel Lawrence, five uh, British pounds. Cappy, I make 75,000. No wife, no kids. My job just increased my pay by 12%. How much should I increase my 401k contributions? It's currently at 11%. I don't know what, I mean, <clears throat> contribute as much as they give you a match. That much I know for sure. I can't answer your question because I don't know anything about your personal financial situation. I wouldn't be able to because I'm not a licensed financial advisor. I mean, contribute up until the point that you get a match, obviously, because that's free money. I guess the second thing is contribute up to the point that you can and get a tax deduction. Might as well. But I'm, I don't know. If, if you had a car loan that was charging you 17% interest, then I'd say, well, pay that off. <laughs> but you, you're not going to hurt yourself saving for retirement. Scrolling, <clears throat> scrolling, scrolling. Mexi man and cheese, five bucks. Women, girls mature earlier than men, also women. Why is this 15-year-old boy so awkward? Why does he know how to not know how to talk to girls? Must be a grapist. Um, I I don't know. That would require me going back to grade school or middle school, rather. I it, I'm, I'm I'm just saying, wash your hands of this guy. I, we got so much else. You got we got big things going on, like paying rent and focusing on your career and going to the gym and going out and joining hiking clubs and maybe meeting a new cool girl there hiking. I would frankly, I just get off the damn internet. I know what you want to know to look like because it's the number one economic investment you're going to make. Do women like me? Nah, they really don't. Okay, now that that's been concluded, go out and live in the real world. I mean, even I, you know, yeah, my, my job is online and requires social media, but I don't like looking at it. I was looking at the abyss the entire time. He hasn't seen diddly squat from you down here. Now you're going to tell me he's going to give a damn what you do to him if he makes it out of here live. <clears throat> Parks and places, 31 homeowner, 150,000 year tall, still not enough. No, I'm, I'm aware. I'm aware. Scrolling. Christoph Anon, five bucks. A lot of Russian women get peeved when they discover you won't get them a U.S. green card. Happen yes, that's what happened to my buddy. Now, admittedly, it wasn't all Russians. I think it was like three Ukrainians and two Russians, but whatever. Those girls are mercenary. Just so you know, it's likely a scam, okay? Especially if you're some old dude who's ugly as hell, and here comes this 10 who's 24. The um, doc did it right going overseas and living there and you know now nah, we'll have a we'll have a chinese wedding <clears throat> or ladies and i've said this before ladies you could just say you don't like men just say we're not that interested and then men know it's the slap they need across the face and they can they can go i mean i've just interpreted all the empirical data and behaviors so yeah they don't like you that much everyone thinks i'm so dark and dull i'm like no <laughs> i'm right I'm right. This isn't an edgy statement. Look at the data. <clears throat> I just wish women would tell like, and, and I guess they have. We don't need you. Well, go on to say we don't want you. And then, the oh, okay, we'll go somewhere else. Goth Rocker, 10 bucks cappy. I work for a natural gas utility. Make 75 to 80 grand. I, see, this is, I know this is anecdotal. I know this is like a poll. It's not as perfect as polling every guy. But I just, you know, there are guys out there that make the money, ladies. <clears throat> uh, Cappy, I work for a natural gas utility, makes 75 to 80 grand. 
was told I am a loser. Yes, I'm a little overweight. Not hor No, 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 no. Let's be honest, goth rocker. You're overweight, period. That's it. The girl's got to be physically attracted to you. All right? Done with the American women. That's fine. You can make that decision because you probably could be in weight and you probably still wouldn't make enough money. All right? But you're overweight. You should be overweight for your own reasons. I, another thing is don't give them an excuse. You have to become the best version of yourself that you can be so that when they reject you, you say, all right, I, there's nothing literally else I could do. Literally nothing else. And then therefore, you know, you're right. Like now, if you're five, five, you can't help that. And obviously women are going to reject you because you're short. I mean, I get that. But if you're, if you got the rest of your game together and you ask out a five, two girl and she's like, I don't know. Okay, fine. There's nothing else I could do. <clears throat> having that freedom knowing you are not to blame is amazing. It's amazing. Why do you think I became ballroom, dancing, banking, property, rental, state, owning? I mean, those are all reasons to get free, and I enjoyed it too. But like after, after that, you're like, look, there is literally nothing else I can do. I can't do anything else. You still reject me? Okay, fine. Your problem, not mine. <clears throat> literally nothing else I can do. Dr. Paradox, five bucks. Pro tip for those looking overseas. Paperwork, sponsorship, green card. Get these questions answered first. If she wants a green card ASAP. Moving along. Thank you. Thank you. I was just under the impression you'd stay there. Like, you're like, yeah, I'm going to find this other place. I'm going to go here. Uh, Neil McCoy, new guy, 10 bucks. I lived in South America five years. It is pathetically easy to get women there, and I'm five foot nine. I wasn't making much money. Key is to never bring them back to the West. Yeah. And that's generally what I've heard from other people. George Gammon goes there. I got a buddy who's a 10. He goes down to Columbia. Um, and they just, it's just like, no, it, it's not, not a big passport, bro. Not a big mail order bride guy. But to me, it's the simple common sense thing. I need some good tacos. But all I look around and see is Taco Bell. You know where I hear they got good tacos? Mexico. You fly to Mexico. Oh, my God, the tacos are great here. And then the women back in, in the United States, oh, my God, you went to Mexico to get tacos? Yeah. <laughs> I like warm weather. I'm going to go to Saudi Arabia. Oh, my God, look at the warm weather. This is totally not like Alaska. Oh, my God, I can't believe you went to Saudi Arabia to get some sun. Okay. I mean, after a while, the time will come. I don't want to sound like a prophet or a preacher. I'm just, just an economist, just making a forecast. <clears throat> the time will come, this irrationality and delusion, right? Although if girls don't really like guys, it's not delusional. But it will become apparent to people in time where they look back with a whole new set of eyes and say, oh, yeah, the women got overweight. They told men they didn't want them. Like all the data, all the media told them that women didn't want men. The men then made the logical decision to go overseas or find more traditional women because they wanted to have, look at, look at their divorce laws. Look at that. You know, like, wow. Okay. Yeah. I mean, future historians and anthropologists or sociologists, that could be a Scooby-Doo mystery. They're going to look back at, you know, just like they did Rome. Well, no one was working. They did bread in circuses and they got fat and lazy <clears throat> and then their empire expended too much, and then the Goths came in, and the barbarians came in and beat them down. You know, no, no one says, "Oh, I, it's a, it's a Scooby Doo mystery." While just sitting on their asses and being gluttons, that that the harder working barbarians didn't take over. <sighs> but it it will come. I guess the shorter version of mine trying to say, "You're not insane. You're not insane." It's sad, it's depressing, and you always should judge yourself. Like, what did I do wrong? Because at least you control that, and nine out of ten times it is you. This time it ain't you. I mean, one one final little bit. If, ladies, you want to be open-minded and put this feather in your empirical cap, you're trying to get men to think that fat chicks are beautiful? Now, maybe you deep down inside don't believe that, but you cannot deny that publicly, not even the internet, television, you're trying to get men to find fat women attractive. Now, that's insane. I mean, that's exhibit, I don't know, <clears throat> F by this point. Like, guys, it's not you. They've lost their freaking minds. 
I'm just going back to, can you be nice? Can you show up on time? <laughs> oh, Dr. Paradox, two bucks. Been dancing all my life. Cap isn't lying. Do it. Yeah, yeah. Dance is good. It's fun. You know, I don't know if you got tired of it, Doc. I did because I, I don't know. If you're not dancing with new girls all the time, it's like, yeah, all right. Christoph and on two bucks. Dubai is great for a sun vacation visit in winter. Yeah, no, I, I'm just, I'm just using it as an example because it's warm and there's sun there. Oh my God, you went there and they got beaches. How dare you? <clears throat> Scrolling, scrolling, scrolling. I think we caught up. Let me double check. Yep, we got them all. Just want to make sure. All right, so that's it. Uh, you don't have to subscribe because I'm already at 100,000. Uh, link below, Book of Numbers, Analyzing the ROI and the Pursuit of Women. Ladies, I implore you to read it just so you could see the numbers. All right, that's not an opinion. Those are numbers. <clears throat> Admittedly, some estimates. You may disagree with that but you might be interested. Also, the menu, Life Without the Opposite Sex, that's for everyone. Half of you are banned. Half of you ain't getting married, and the other half to do, 75% are miserable. <laughs> it's not a joke. That's, that's an estimate. And then for those of you who are confused and you don't have your dad, and like, God, I don't want to have this life, go please take the course, The Dad You Never Had. Available on Teachable. Just search the dad you never had, Aaron Clary Teachable, and you'll find it. And we'll see you guys later. Toodles.